Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Hello. Vieja. What's up, baby? How you doing? Just chilling, man. I just finished working out, you know? Yeah. No, I hear you. Hey, do me a favor. Um, when the kids get home today, uh, just go buy yourself a, a, a Bentley and just don't don't spend over 200K, just 200K, all right? Put my hundred dollars on my books, yeah? All right, baby. All right, love you. I never got to do that. <laughs> Shit, I just wanted 50 bucks. <laughs> La más reciente y expandida acusación contra miembros de ese cartel que incluye a nueve acusados, entre ellos el Chapo Guzmán, su hijo Jesús Alfredo y el Mayo Zambada. Enfrentan cargos por importación, distribución de narcóticos y lavado de dinero. Las autoridades no comentaron sobre si pedirán formalmente la extradición del Chapo Guzmán a Chicago. Esto mientras el sitio de reclusión de los hermanos Flores permanecerá secreto debido a razones de... The federal courts just filed a new investigation on Pedro and Margarito Flores. The twin brothers that put El Chapo away. They might not even come home, guys. Or they might even not stay out long enough. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subanse la suburban. Come on, Pancho, hurry up. This motherfucker, man. Yes, sir. Another episode. Another episode of Cartel Life. A court filing reveals a new investigation on the twin brothers from Chicago. Pedro on your left and Margarito on your right are the two twin brothers born in Chicago and raised in Little Village biggest drug traffickers. The US took $4 million away from the twin brothers and gave his family 300K to live, you know, for living expenses as they were gonna be under protective custody and, and they were gonna be taking care of their families as they were taking care of the twins. But the feds are saying that the, that the twin brothers were spending money while they were incarcerated, you know, getting ready for the trial and all that stuff. So was there more money? I promise. I gave you all my money. Hurt that you think I would save money from you. I don't even speak Spanish no more. Ya te di toda la feria, güey. ¿Qué más quieres? Are associated with drugs, especially in Mexico. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency designated Mexican drug cartels as the greatest criminal drug threat to the USA. Mexican drug cartels rose to prominence in the 80s and 90s. The most powerful ones extend beyond the Sinaloa cartel, once led by the notorious El Chapo. The cartel's main motive? Money. We're talking billions. As drugs go north, fueled by demand, weapons and cash go south. The drug seizures at the border increased from 2010 to 2018. The cartels act like sophisticated businesses. They employ chemists, financial advisors, and assassins, and often work indirectly with gangs in the USA. The footprint of Mexican cartels extend all over the United States, and they deal with more than drugs. Mexico's cartels have diversified into human trafficking. One billion and four million is, is, is a big, you know, <laughs> it's a big gap right there. Pedro bought his wife a 200K Bentley while he was in prison. At the end of the day, guys, that is what the government is looking for, money. It wants pretty much what it's got coming, and if you forfeit that deal, they can take back that deal and give you the years that you were supposed to be given. Now, it is said that they're all, in the, they're all under investigation, them including their wives also, so who knows what the uh, feds have planned. I've said it in the past, and I'll say it again, 
you know, once the feds have you in their sight and you're under, you know, under their care, or whatever you want to call it, they're going to know everything that you're doing because they're listening to everything, they're watching everything, and they're doing their job. That's what they get paid for. They're paid to be like special op motherfuckers to catch fucking drug dealers and people that break the law. So, with that being said, if you're really not doing nothing wrong then you really shouldn't fear nothing because that was one of my biggest hurdles in my life is that even though i wasn't doing nothing wrong i still felt guilty and i still felt a certain way every time i was out a cop would get behind me i would get you know paranoid i would turn on the first corner or if i would go straight i would be i would keep looking in the mirror then they would pull me over because i looked suspicious and it just kept on going on and on once you stop looking at yourself like that and it, and it starts with you not doing nothing wrong to begin with even when nobody's watching that's where the starts at then it snowballs to how you start to feel like as an individual and then that reflects onto everybody else looking at you yeah that's like some x-men shit right <laughs> <laughs> but it's true man it's pretty it's pretty simple man we just like to complicate things because it's in our nature and that's how we are. We, we try to sometimes think that we're, we're smarter than the next or that our ideas are better or, or it just, this is what I mean. At the end of the day, when you are humble and you like to help people and you are on a whole different level in your heart and in your mind, you should be okay. Shit, that shit was deep. My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, if you live easy, life is hard. But if you live hard, life can be pretty fucking easy. So stay out of jail. Don't sell drugs. Don't gangbang. Don't do drugs. Don't hang around with bad people. Don't be around bad people. And get your motherfucking life together. I'll catch you guys in the rebound.